Hi, my name is Dave, and this will start a new series, I hope, um, about the restoration of this beautiful Tinsley Mount. Probably dates from the 40s or the 30s or the 50s. Certainly dates from at least the 50s or before that. Anyway, I'm going to try and figure all that out and restore this to something like its original condition. Uh, before I get started with that, I want to show you the motor. Okay, here's the hand control. You can hear that's the right ascension motor, and I know it's driving it. I can see the very slowly the the worm gear is moving at about once every 24 hours. Um, here's the control off and on for that, and then this is see it turns that. That's clearly the slow motion. This is 1950s technology. Quite interesting. Charming, primitive, but charming. Okay. okay, so here we go. Let's take a look all the way around. First of all, there's something going on here. That thing, that's not right. Um, and it's not just backlash. There's something else going on in this. Maybe part of it's backlash. But I tried to adjust the backlash and that didn't take it out of there. There's quite a bit of play in the declination. The right ascension clutch is all messed up. I don't know, I'm going to have to tear it apart. One of the reasons I wanted this so badly was because I worked on a smaller Tinsley, very similar to it. I think the overall design is almost identical. It didn't have any of the electrical stuff, but everything else is pretty similar, so I should be able to understand how it all works, get it apart, and see if I can adjust it. So uh, let's see if I can turn this around. Give you a look at this thing. It's completely massive. The head here weighs about 90 pounds or so. I'll give you a look down. Now, one of the first things I did was to put it on wheels. I bought some wheels and adapted them to it. So that's how the whole thing works. <coughs> One thing that has to be fixed right away, for sure, is that I've got to have a housing for this electronics. Um, I'll see what I can figure out with that. This is a Tinsley mount that I obtained some time ago. Uh, it's completely torn down and restored. Everything is fully functional pretty much as it was when it was new with a few um, shinier brass and stainless steel bolts and so forth. These, uh, some of these brass pieces would have been, uh, were painted. <coughs> so uh, the paint has been stripped from some of the brass. This is, uh, and this is a cast aluminum mount, very lightweight. This mount is a whole different beast. It's considerably bigger. It's clearly exactly the same. It's a Tinsley with exactly the same kinds of um, shapes to the castings and so forth. This is uh, steel. These are steel castings. It's a very robust mount. Could easily hold a very large telescope. It was probably designed to hold up to maybe a 10 inch Cassegrain. A nice big long Cassegrain. Uh, or maybe even bigger. But it's uh, certainly more than robust, and uh, the this has, I believe, this to be an original electric clock drive <coughs> with a mechanical sort of a drive corrector, and it's um, quite robust and quite old school. It was, it's going to be a challenge. I really uh, bit off more than I might be able to chew with this thing. Uh, so stay tuned and you'll see what happens. All right, let me show you what's going on with this thing. Now, one of the things about it is this play here, like that, is caused by the fact that that lock nut was not cinched down tight. It was too loose. Now, I get that nice and tight. Okay, cinch that down. Now, all of a sudden, this whole thing is well coupled. So the two things are, are locked together better. 
Okay, so that fix was pretty simple. This is the Tinsley telescope mount, all complete, as far as I'm going to restore it anyway. Uh, I've got it all painted up and uh, repaired as best I can. Everything is working, and it's uh, it's not bad. It's a very beefy, very robust mount. There's the. That's a, a lock for the declination and then this is the declination slow motion the clutch is a little bit loose you could probably see it moving slightly in declination anyway it's uh, I could tighten that clutch up a little bit there's some set screws in here like with any t Tinsley uh, clutch it's just a little couple of set screws in there um, and same kind of situation over here on the right ascension this is uh, pretty well balanced. This is about 35 pounds up here. This is about 42 pounds down here. So it's a little overkill, a little too much counterweight for this particular telescope. It'd probably work okay. And it's, uh, I've got the, the, I got the clutch adjusted pretty well, I think. Let me demonstrate how some of this works. First of all, with the declination, you can see that it's moving nice and smoothly. Uh, you may remember from the earlier videos that it was there was some play in there. Well, I've there was a just a simple set screw in here, and I uh, did have to re-drill it and uh, reset it. But that was all there was to that. One of the changes that I made to this telescope was to uh, this used to be one solid long shaft. I cut it right here, and I designed I set it up so that you could. Very much like uh, Lasmandi or most any other sane telescope mount. You can now put this on here and counterweights on like so. Good to go. Anyway, even, even with the shaft by itself, it's too much. So now I've got it balanced about right here. As you can see. And the clutch is a little too tight to demonstrate it well, but you get the idea. It moves smoothly now. It wasn't before. And the clutch was all gummed up. These, the, there was lots of junk and stuff inside there. So it's not at all surprising that the clutch was totally gummed up and, uh, and would not work. So now I've got it all set up. And now the clock drive, the clock drive was working from the get-go when I got it previous owner and a friend of his had fixed it all up so that it was all fully functional. Then I've got the clock drive plugged in. Here's the hand paddle. I'll give you close-ups of all this. Anyway, you can see that it's moving. There's, this is not exactly a declination. This wouldn't be good for correcting uh, for guiding. It's too much. But it would be uh, just fine for slewing and centering and so forth. And apparently, I'm not sure if they had drive correctors back in those days that would be useful for that. They may have had a drive corrector. You could plug this into a, an inverter and, uh, and change the speeds that way. Even back in those, those days, back in the 50s, I think they may have had those. But this would have been used for slewing, apparently. All right, let me give you a little bit of a close-up of that. One of the things you can see I've done is uh, there's a hunk of aluminum hanging off here, a cover plate. Well, I, I decided that these gears were so nifty looking and stuff that I think you would want to be able to see them. They're really, really neat. So I, uh, so I put a, I just took a piece of plexiglass and put a cover on there. I also, there was some electronics hanging off here. Uh, which was beautifully done, and uh, and I just put I just housed that, put a housing on here, didn't change anything about it, just put it inside a housing. So here's the switch, and you can see one of the things I wanted to point out to you is that this is obviously a a very very nice um, clutch mechanism with a planetary gear system because what's going on here is it's 
it's turning, and you can see this is turning that way, and this is turning the other way, so there's planetary gears going on in there. And then when you engage this, you can effectively reverse that. What I'm doing is turning this shaft here, and that's acting on the whole planetary gear system to reverse the drive. This part of it goes down to the actual telescope here. And when I do it this way, it increases the speed just a little bit. Nifty. I really like it. This thing also has an extremely strange setting circle. First of all, up at the top of the mount, it's got a fairly standard hour angle type of uh, right ascension circle. And then it's got this one down here. And this is designed so that you can lock it down. And what you were supposed to do apparently is find some object, a star, so forth. Set it here. Oops. <laughs> this friction thing is very, it's not intuitive. It's backwards. You have to turn it the other way to tighten it down. So you turn it the wrong way to tighten it down. And then that's locked. Now that's locked to the axis. I'm not sure if you can see, but the axis is turning now. So you can <laughs> set the setting circle in that fashion. This thing here uh, seems to serve very little function other than to kind of get in the way. <laughs> it tells you what's going on there. I, I, I got no clue why they put that on there. Apparently they were just trying to be fancy about it. So, uh, let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> the, the, the way this works is so counterintuitive. All right, I lock it down that way. Now it's locked. Okay. How's that for nifty and strange? I hope you've enjoyed watching as I fumbled my way through the restoration of this charming, strange Tinsley mount from the 1940s, 1950s. Thank you very much for watching.